Hello, welcome. If you're looking for a tutorial on the use of logism for Chris Lorelli's Digital Fundamental course, you've come to the right place. If not, well, hopefully I'm able to teach you a little something anyway. Okay, as I said, the purpose of this video is to learn a little bit about logism so you can use it for this course. So first thing we have to do is go get it. So you'll see I've got the announcements page open here. I'm going to scroll on down until I find the free Logic CAD program. And I'm going to click on the link by opening it in a new tab. And then I'm going to open that tab. Okay, so here we are at the Sorge Forge download page for Logism. Now it is a perfectly safe free download. It's not going to hurt your computer. It should work on any of the platforms. So all we have to do is download it. Here are my download box. So I can go ahead and get rid of that page. And I can run Logism. And here's the first screen you're going to get greeted to by Logism. Now, it gives you some quick links for often common used stuff right here at the top. And with these primitives, these three primitive gates here, you can build any gate that we're ever going to work with. However, if you come down to gates, you'll see it gives you a little bit more of a selection, even more. So I suggest you, you go through and you kind of familiarize yourself with the different categories here, such as we'll just grab a AND gate. When we click on the AND gate, it's going to give us the facts about that AND gate. Okay, it's one data bit. The size that we choose, we can either make it huge or small or wide. We're going to go for narrow this time. The number of inputs, we can select the number of inputs from a drop-down menu. I'm going to go for two inputs. I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to call it U1. I'm going to cap lock that. Okay, even you can even change the font if you want to on the item. And then you can come out here, drag it, and stick it into the field. Okay, give it a lead output. Two leads for the input. Matter of fact, let me separate those leads a little bit. There we go. Now give those each of those leads an input block, which is the square block that you see there. Two inputs. I can give it an output node and leave it at that. And you see it will display what the output is for any given input. Or if I want, I can delete that and come down here to the input output section. And for the inputs, you can have a push button or a keyboard output. You can have an LED, which is what I'm going to select right now. Now the characteristics for the LED, it's going to say the input is facing west, which will be to your left can give you the the color in uh, it looks like HTML color codes we'll give it a label is DS1 we're going to put that label north of the the item once again we got the fonts and the label color all right now for two zeros going into an AND gate I'm getting a zero out or a not lit state because it wants a, a state of 1 to light up. And that would be, if we go back to the, the LED and we look at the characteristics here, active on high or low, okay, or yes or no. So if I say active on no, it's going to light up. If I say active on yes, being a high, it's going to be a 0. Now if I come over here to the finger section, that means I can just point and click and change the state. And you see when something goes to a 1, it goes from dark green to bright green. So if I give it two ones on an AND gate, I'm going to get a high output. 
Now, because I might want to use this as an actual schematic, and in an actual schematic, you have to put a current limit resistor on a LED. Well, I might come up here to the wiring section and find a pull resistor. And right now it's facing south. Let's make it face north. And we're going to just stick that as a resistor. We don't actually care that it's a pull resistor or not. We're just using it as a resistor. And let's see, part of a schematic also requires us to put it a ground. So we're going to put that ground on that pull resistor. And then we're going to label it. Okay, we'll hit that resistor again. And we'll come up here to label. And we're going to call that resistor R1. Now we'll use our pointer to grab that R1 and move it to where we can read it. So now we have a complete schematic. We have two inputs. We have our discrete logic component. We have our output component, in this case an LED, even though it's not a schematic LED symbol. For this, we'll understand that that is an LED. We have a current limiting resistor, what we did forget on the current limiting resistor is we have to give it a value and that value we're going to call 470 ohms I don't think this will let me do symbols There we go. Now let's grab that label and with the pointer and move it where we can see it. Let's see. We have to label our inputs. And our output, so that's pin 1, pin 2, and pin 3. Once again, move that where it's going to belong so we can tell it belongs to that item. And what is U1? Well, U1 is a 74LS08. There we go. So now we have a complete schematic. So if we want to use this as our actual schematic for our project, what we'll do is we'll come over here to File, say Export the Image as a JPEG file, and we're going to call this, oh, we'll just pick a, a project, um, oh, let's go to OK, here we go. We'll label this as Lab 3.4 Procedure 1. You see it's a, a JPEG. Um, Got to make sure we know it's a schematic. And we can place that anywhere on our computer as long as we know where to find it. So we'll export that. All right, so now this is a safe schematic I can use elsewhere in, in um, if I'm doing a project, because part of any project is making sure you have your schematics. All right, so once again, you can do all kinds of great stuff with this very simple program. It, you can stick it on your desktop and, and ignore it until it's time to use, but for the entire, entire course, it's going to give us everything we need. Uh, if we look at the memory, we got flip-flops. We have D flip-flops. And if you hold your cursor over a pin, it will tell you what state that is, what, what state it needs to be active. Okay, clock state updates on trigger. The enable, it is enabled when zero, and it will allow the clock triggers to work.
the clear input when it's a one it's going to reset everything reset the Q output to zero the preset when it's state of one it's going to make the Q output a one and we'll learn more about flip-flops as the course goes on so all kinds of, of components we can use all kinds of things you can build and then you can simulate once again by changing the inputs if I wanted to I could take this input and get rid of it and come down here to the inputs let's see here wiring clock input there we go we'll put a clock on there high duration one tick low duration one tick label clock and then make it go or we can tell it to simulate enable the ticks and watch that guy go let's bring that tick frequency down to say one Hertz so once a second it'll change so play familiarize yourself it'll be a, you'll be amazed how you can uh, create circuits that you can use as part of your homework then you can you can work through the different concepts here on the in the simulator and then use it when answering questions going to get rid of this and say that's about it that's our tutorial on using logism it involves a lot of playing around but you can see it's a pretty versatile little tool so I will see you the next time. Bye.